Hey everyone, this is Nick, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make this stylized dumbbell dot plot or connected dot plot right here that is actually taking sort of two variables into account here. You can see that we might be measuring something like a survey response from a group of people, and we wanna compare that group's response to another group's of response, and maybe they responded to the survey each two different points in time, maybe a pre and a post, or a before experience and after experience. So this is kind of a little different than a traditional uh, connected dot plot. We're not just showing uh, differences between two groups or two points in time, we're actually going to show the difference between those two groups and two points in time right here. You have to set it up in a very specific way, and there are probably a lot of different ways that you can do this. I'm actually gonna make this entire thing from an XY scatter plot inside of Excel. You can paste this into PowerPoint, and then you can work with it there as well. But I'm gonna go ahead, and I'm not gonna do too much of the data setup. I just want you to go ahead, and you can pause this and look at exactly how I set up the data tables, and you can set them up on on your own as well. And at some point, I will put a link below to download this workbook if you want to sort of follow along and download the workbook um, from my Gum Road Shop. It'll make it a free uh, available link there. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down just so that you can see how some of this is set up. So I have this data table right here. This is gonna be what makes up those gray bands in the background. You have the Y values, the, um, the Y values, the X values, and then we also have to calculate a difference column. Then we have our group A values, so our group A pre and post. This white, these white cells, these are the data. These are our data that you want to visualize. And then this is some of the other dummy series that we need to set up here. This is a difference between the post and the pre data right here. We need to calculate that. And then also our Y values here. We know that we're gonna have uh, two different pairs of dumbbells kind of going from top to bottom. So in total, we're gonna have four lines that we need uh, to attend to in terms of that y-axis. So we'll start on four and then we need to alternate to two for this group A. And then for group B, we'll start on three and alternate down to one. So this is set up with your pre and post. This is the difference between the post and the pre. So it's just the post subtracted or the pre subtracted from the post. And then our y values here, it's three and one. And this is a little extra um, table here for the group labels that we're gonna embed in the chart. We're in, instead of putting a text box on top of the chart, we'll embed the labels inside the chart. So we're just gonna to have to follow along with me here and uh, trust me that this is gonna work uh, pretty well. Let's go ahead and first just make that scatter plot and we're gonna insert the groups of dots. So I'm gonna go ahead and say insert. We're gonna insert just a blank scatter plot. We actually don't need any data. If it does happen to uh, give you data, we're just gonna right click and we're going to just get rid of all this data here in the source menu. I'm gonna say, uh, delete and then enter. Now you can see I have um, this sort of blank scatter plot right here, XY. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and we're gonna say select data. The select data source menu will pop up and I'm gonna add some new series here. So this is where I'm gonna put our group A. Uh, and it's gonna be, this is the, for the, gonna be for the pre. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the X values to the pre, push enter, the Y values. We're gonna pull from that Y value column there and then I'm gonna push okay. Now you can see we got some dots going on here. We're gonna add group B. This is the pre. Push enter, the Y values will go over here. Now we've got a couple other dots going on there. Now we need to add the post. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these post data right here. And the Y values there. And We'll add one more series here. And I already see a little uh, mistake that I made. So we're gonna have to go back. So right here, I'm gonna say post. We'll just do this as we did it so that you can see how it goes. And the Y values there. And now we have all of our sets of dumbbell, our pairs of dumbbell dots right here. Now the thing is, when you look at this behind the scenes in the data source, you can see it says group A, group B, group A, group B. I actually want these to just say pre and post. So when you want to edit these, all we need to do is click on one of the groups Click on edit, and then over here under series name, we can repoint this to another cell. We can put that to pre right there. And we're gonna do that for all of the rest of them. So for the group B, we're gonna say this is pre instead. For the group A, this is the post. We'll set it there. Oh, oops, I think I inadvertently did this. Oops, we're gonna say that's the post there. The X value is here, perfect. All right, that puts everything back in order. And then one more, we're gonna edit this here. 
I'm going to put that there. This is going to help us in the end when we label some of these things. And we'll push OK. All right, excellent. So now let's go ahead and stylize these dots just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and make them larger. Let's say to 12 points there. I'm going to fill this one with white. And we're going to make it a blue outline. And then these, we will make t uh, 12 points. And we're going to fill them with blue so they're solid blue and make sure there's a blue outline around it. Perfect. And then this, we will expand this to 10. These are our orange dots for group B. Oops, 12 points. We'll make that. And we're going to fill that with white. Make sure there's an orange line around it. And then our post, we're going to make 12 and perfect. And make sure that there's an orange line. So now those dumbbells are really taking shape. And you can see them. Now we need to create that connecting line between them. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the legend because we don't need that. Uh, we need to create the connecting line between them. And that's why we calculated the difference values here. So I'm just going to click on the top box. We're going to add some error bars. And we don't need the vertical error bars. We just need the horizontal error bars. But I can't see them. So I'm going to go up to the chart options. I'm going to unclick that Skittle. Go up to the chart options menu here. Under this drop down, you can see it says post x error bars. That's where we're going to collect uh, so that those are selected. And then we're going to format those error bars so that they are just minus and then no cap. Go to the custom specify value, click on that, and then that's where we're going to highlight the values to the difference column. So both for the positive and the negative, we're going to make sure that those are pointing to the difference column. And when I push OK, now you can see that the dumbbell, the, the um, error bars, creates that little dumbbell stick in between the two dots. So we'll do the exact same thing here. Add some error bars, get rid of the vertical, and we'll just highlight the horizontal, minus, no cap, custom, specify value. Let's go ahead and point to our difference column there, our difference column right here. Push Enter and OK. And now we have these beautiful dumbbells. Very, very cool. Now now what we're going to need, let's go back up to the, to the example. We're definitely now going to need these gray bands. And the gray bands are just another series of dots that we create and kind of live behind the scenes there. So I'm going to go back down here. Let's scroll over, and then this is my table here. So the, our survey items are right here. We have the bottom x at 1. We have the top x at 5. That's because our maximum, we're actually going to set our scale here. We have to change our scale here. So whatever your scale is going to be, but mine is going to be 1 to 5. So I'm going to update the scale right here to a minimum value of 1 and a, posit, a maximum value of 5. And then what we're going to do is we are going to add a couple more series. So we're going to add a top series and a bottom series. So I'm going to go ahead and select data. Uh, and we're going to add this new series here. We're going to say the label, it's going to be the x bottom there. So I'm going to set that. The y values will be the y values for both. So that's going to be 3.5 and, and 1.5. And because we want, them, we want these labels to show up in between the pairs of dumbbells that we've created. And now we're going to add one more for the top. x values there. Y values. Click OK. Now you can see these sort of ghost, uh, see these, these little dots right here. We're actually going to get rid of them. But first, we need to make those connecting sticks. So let's go ahead and put some error bars here. Let's click on the top ones. Click on the Skittle. Get those error bars back. I don't want the vertical ones, so I'll delete those. Uh, but I don't see the horizontal ones again. So I'm going to go ahead and try to get those back. There they are right here. This should be it. And we're going to go ahead and say minus, no cap, custom. Specify value. I'm going to point to the difference column there for the positive and the difference column there for the negative. Perfect. All right. And now you see that we have those connecting, that connecting um, stick between those two dots. But we don't want them to, to, we don't want this to be so dark. So I'm going to go ahead and update the color of this line to a very, very light gray right here. And then what I'm going to do is increase the width. And I'm just going to keep on pushing that. And you can see now the width of that line is going to increase. And we're just going to eyeball this. We're just going to go all the way until it sort of touches the sticks of the others. And you can see it kind of is covering up one of those things. So you have to just adjust it uh, to the point where the um, connecting lines of those dumbbell pairs sort of show up. So that looks pretty good, I think. 
Now what we're going to do is get rid of the uh, horizontal grid lines. We don't need those anymore. And then what we're going to do is put these markers, these dot markers right here. We're just going to go over to the marker and say none so that those aren't going to show up. We just have our gray bands. Really, really nice. That looks really nice, I think. Now what we're going to do is um, I'm going to actually delete this column right here. If we wanted to, we could actually adjust the y-axis. Let's just go ahead and adjust this to 4.1. We have to do that, otherwise the dumbbell will kind of disappear. And then the minimum value, make sure to reset that to 0. And now I might want to go ahead and adjust our gray bars just a little bit more so we can maybe increase the width of the gray bar so that it goes all the way to the top there. And it looks pretty nice. I think that looks that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and just get uh, make these a little bit lighter, those grid lines, so that they don't show up quite as much. And then here, I'm going to go ahead and delete the y-axis because we don't need it. Now, I do want to have labels. So what we're going to do is kind of click over here. Uh, we need to get those uh, markers, these markers back, the, the X bottom markers. So what I'm going to do is click down that drop down menu and then go to the X bottom. That was our X value menus there. You can see now those markers are highlighted. I'm going to right click and say add data labels. Now it's set to the X value, so those are not, um, or the Y value, so those are really not meaningful here. So what we're going to do with these labels selected is go over to the format label menu, and then we're going to uh, get rid of the Y values and say value from cells. And now it's asking us to point where do we want the labels to come from, and I want them to come from here, the survey items. So I'm going to highlight those cells there and click OK. And now we have those, really nice. And if I wanted to, I could move this in, and then I could set these over to the left, just like our example. And that would be a really pretty example of this. Now, I'm going to get rid of the axis line here. I don't think we need that, so I'm just going to say no line. And I think that looks really pretty. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to decrease the plot area just a little bit, because I want to do some things with labeling. And you can see that when I did that, all of my the dumbbell sticks went away. So that just means that we're going to have to adjust the width of that gray bar again. So right now it's set to 44. I'm just going to keep on clicking down until I get those dumbbell sticks back. And there it looks like that worked pretty well. So you're just going to have to eyeball that part. Now what I want to do is I want to label this pre and post. So I'm going to double click this one to isolate it. Right click, add the data label, move this to the top. And then I'm going to say, uh, series name here, and then just make sure that the values are unselected. Get rid of that one. So this one says pre, and then we're going to do this one as a post, so add that label there, set it to above, and then the series name there. So pre and post. So now we have these embedded data labels there for pre and post. And now if I wanted to, I can already see that this um, orange, uh, the orange pre is a little bit smaller. So I want, actually want to set this to a 12. I think it's actually set to tw uh, 10. So we're going to set that to 12. Now I want to have these labels for group A and group B that appear right here. Now if I wanted to, I could just insert a text box for group A and put it right on top of there. That would work really well. But if you wanted to, you could embed a new series of data in this and just use that for the labels. And they would live kind of underneath these pre-dots right here. So that's what I have this table over here. The group labels will have uh, the x value is 3.5 and, and 3 because that's where uh, my group A pre and post uh, uh, values live, and then the Y values are going to be 4 and 3 because those labels are going to show up on this fourth line and this third line right here. So let's go ahead and right click, select data, we'll add a new series of data. I'm going to go back over to my group labels there. And then on the X values, we will say that column right there, and on our Y values, we'll say this 4 and 3 column, and we'll click OK. And now you can see in the chart that we have these two little extra dots that have now appeared. I'm going to go ahead and add data labels. We'll move these over to the left. And then we're going to have to do that value from cells trick one more time. We're going to get rid of the Y value, click on value from cells, go back over here, and then click on that. We're going to say OK. And now our group A and group B labels have appeared. Now for the markers, we can just get rid of them. You can't delete them, but we just want to say none. So go to marker options and then say none. Perfect. And now if we wanted to, we could isolate this to recolor it. We'll make it bold and blue. And then we'll recolor this one orange and bold. 
and now you have this most, most beautiful chart. Of course, you're going to get rid of the grid line, the border of the chart line, and it's going to look really, really nice. It's a pretty cool chart type. It took us about 15 minutes to make it, but once you get used to it, you're going to start clicking really fast, and you're going to be able to make this puppy in maybe like five minutes. So it's a pretty cool, and if you have multiple, um, more than two uh, survey items, you can make it with as many survey items as you have. You just have to make sure that that X, um, the Y axis is set uh, from, instead of four to one, you would go from, you know, 10 to one if you had 10 survey items, something like that. So it's pretty easy uh, to make, but also it's pretty cool. It packs a lot of a lot of information into one sort of chart type. I hope you give it a try. If you uh, made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope that you'll subscribe. You'll like the video, cl click the thumbs up, and then click the subscribe button and the bell next to it. You'll get notified every time I make a new uh, video in data design, usually PowerPoint, Excel, or Word. I had a great time making this one for you. It's a, if it, it's a challenging one, but I think you'll really like it. I hope you all have a great day. Bye-bye.